This comes one day after North Korea launched two short-range ballistic missiles into the Sea of Japan. U.S. officials say this was a test, likely part of North Korea's weapons systems research and development, notably the first escalation since the Biden administration took office. So what could this mean for the future of U.S. diplomacy with North Korea? Let's ask Bruce Klinger, senior research fellow at the Heritage Foundation, also former CIA deputy chief for Korea. Um, were you surprised, Bruce, that, that he sort of ticked uh, North Korea up above China and Russia as number one on their foreign policy concerns right now? I, I was a bit surprised. Uh, I think North Korea is is the the wolf closest to the sled, but I think Russia and China are are larger overall threats. But North Korea is the one that's most likely to do something very provocative, uh, certainly in the near term. How worried are you that one of these ballistic missiles that they fire off uh, is going to land somewhere? Well, in the past, they've launched uh, when they do long range tests over Japan. But in the last couple of years, what they've done are uh, very high lofted trajectories so that they don't fly over Japan. Uh, when they did ICBM tests, they did them uh, very high, uh, but when you stretch out what would be the range, it could cover all of the continental United States. So in this case, it was a, a short range ballistic missile only went out, uh, you know, uh, 400 or 500 kilometers. So it, it was far short of even the Japanese uh, territorial waters or, or the economic zone. One more question on this before we move to China. The Biden administration recently quietly reached out to North Korea. And from what I gather, these ballistic missile tests were the response. Well, it's it's hard to tell what, you know what is a response or not. I, I think North Korea really just goes ahead and does these tests when they want to. And then often we try to interpret it as it's a response to perhaps the Secretary of State and Defense's visit. It's because of the recent computer simulated uh, military exercise or uh, President Biden downplaying last week's cruise missile test. So I think it's North Korea was going to do it anyway, just as they are likely to do even more provocative measures later this year, perhaps within the next few months, because they always do something very strongly provocative in the first year of a U.S. or South Korean administration. What do you make of the picture the president painted today of U.S.-China relations? Well, it, it's certainly uh, strained, and uh, the, the Alaska meeting certainly called into question how what kind of progress we can make with Beijing. Uh, I think it's necessary to point out the areas of differences that we have with Beijing and, and point out the U.S. positions to make clear uh, that we're not going to be pushed around on uh, matters by Beijing. Especially human rights. That was something he brought up in particular. It, exactly. So certainly the Uyghur situation and, and Hong Kong are, are areas that we need to press uh, China on, and also with North Korea, Secretary Blinken uh, called out North Korea for their human rights violations during his trip to Northeast Asia. All right, Bruce Klinger, an expert for us tonight from North Korea. We will uh, talk with you soon. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you.